Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to make another illegal clone of an official Beam and G Drive vehicle in Automation, the car company tycoon game. For today's video, we're going to be cloning an Abishu 200BX, and if we do another video in this series, I want you guys to tell me which car are you most interested in seeing. So leave a comment down below, and whichever car is the most popular will be the one we do for the next video in this series. So the first thing we need to figure out is what kind of body style best matches the Abishu 200BX in automation. And the first thing we need to do is get rid of all the junk. This isn't a van, an SUV, a truck, or a boat. This is a coupe. And it officially came out in 1990, so we're going to scroll down to the 90s. Here we go. And I even scrolled down a little bit extra to see if any of the older cars match up better, so that just doesn't look right. That's a mid-engine vehicle, so that's no good. That one could be right, but it only has one window on the side. And uh, that one looks pretty spot on, but we'll keep looking just in case. That one's mid-engine only. That looks way different, and so does that. So this car is going to be the one we choose, and it comes in convertible, two-door, or four-door configurations. Obviously, we want the two-door. And the first thing we should do is make sure the year is correct because we don't want to use parts that are from the future. And a couple of parts actually did disappear just from the panel material options. So here we have the choice really between steel and corrosion resistant steel because I know the panels are going to be steel but I don't know what kind of steel. And if I don't know I'm just going to give it the best option we can which is corrosion resistant steel. For the chassis type it's not a ladder chassis because you've never seen the body separate from the frame. It's not a light truck model cock because it's not a truck. And it's not a space frame chassis because those have very obvious looks to them that you would notice it is going to be a monocoque chassis and then for the chassis material again it's the same deal where it's going to be steel it's not carbon fiber i know that not for the kind of pricing you would get a car like this but i have no idea what kind of steel so it's corrosion resistant for engine placement it's going to be front longitudinal because it's a front engine rear wheel drive configuration and then for the suspension if we look at the car we can rule out all but one option so it doesn't have a solid axle going straight across the wheels, so that rules out all the solid axle options. And it doesn't have a double wishbone configuration. So that means the only option left is a McPherson strut setup. Now onto the rear, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what kind of suspension is back here because there's a lot of parts going in every which direction and they're all really darkly colored so they blend together. But for my best guess, this appears to be a multi-link suspension configuration. And we can tell it's not a solid axle configuration because I didn't see a solid axle between the two wheels. It didn't appear to be a semi-trailing arm because look how simple a semi-trailing arm is and it looked a lot more complex than that. It didn't appear to be a double wishbone because I didn't see two distinct wishbones. And then it's obviously not a push rod because in a push rod the springs go from left to right instead of up and down. Which really just leaves us with multi-link which is basically there's multiple links and it might just look like a mess on the 200BX situation I guess. So now we can move on to the engine and we have a great name for this engine. It's going to be the Family 5 Variant 1 engine. And Beam and G says the engine in this car is an inline 4 at about 2 liters large. So that is 2 liters squared off. Again, I don't know what the bore versus stroke is, so I just keep it squared off. And it's slightly over 2000 cc, but I always overachieve rather than underachieve. For the block material, we are going to go with aluminum because I'm assuming this engine is roughly inspired by the SR20 series of engines and for those ones they had both aluminum blocks and aluminum heads. For the head configuration, if we look at the engine you can see the head kind of points outward separately in two different directions. If you see something like that, that distinctive shape means it's going to be a dual overhead cam configuration because none of the other options have a shape like that. All the other ones are more straight and flat. So that's that. And then for the number of valves, we have absolutely no way of knowing that because that's an internal thing in the engine. So again, we go to the SR20 reference and I believe all of those, if not the majority, were four valve designs. As for the internals of the engine, I'm going to keep it simple, we're just going to use cast on everything and we'll make it stronger if we need to, but I don't expect to need to make it any stronger than that. We'll tune all this later. Now this is something that's a little bit interesting. Again, this is an internal thing where we have no idea what the engine would actually use, but we have the option to use variable valve timing. So we're going to go back again to the SR20 series of engines and sometimes they had VVT, sometimes they didn't. But if we look real closely, you'll see the ones that were used in vehicles that are similar to the one we're designing, it looks like VVT on would be the incorrect choice, so we're going to keep it as none. No turbocharger here because this is naturally aspirated. And then for the fuel system, it has no visible carburetor so it's injection and it's going to be multi-point EFI 
because both of the other two options have very distinctive features they're like this giant piece attached and there's no such piece like that on the car we're trying to copy and then for the configuration and intake looking at the engine it looks very basic and simple so we're going to keep things nice and simple with a single configuration with just a regular standard intake for the fuel type i'm going to give it regular fuel because I feel like with the base version of the vehicle, that is the proper option. And then premium would be on the higher end version that has the same engine tuned for more horsepower. It looks like the red line of the 200BX is right at about 6,800 RPM, which is 1,000 more than what it is by default. So we increase that. And then we go to the headers. And this is a part where you have a little bit of a conundrum. This looks like a short cast configuration because you have multiple tubes meeting up in different locations that are all collected down into a single tube before it goes to the exhaust. And that is pretty much exactly what a cast log looks like because if we go to a short cast, you can see it looks very different because all the tubes meet up in one central point to get to the exhaust and all the other ones are way, way fancier and out of our league. The problem is though, is if we do something like that and we have just it as unrestrictive as we possibly can, we will run into problems. First off, the engine is knocking, so let's go ahead and fix that real quickly so we can actually start the engine. And to fix that, the simple solution is just increase the fuel mixture until it stops knocking. So there we go, the engine has stopped knocking. But now, if we actually take this thing to the dyno, you can see those headers are seriously choking the engine. And I try never to really use the quality sliders because they feel cheap, but even if we max out the quality and try that again, you see the headers are still really choking down the engine and we're just not quite getting the performance you would see out of the 200BX engine in Beam and G Drive. So just for convenience sake, I'm gonna give it short cast headers so that way it gets performance that is more similar to the engine we're trying to duplicate. So now if we go over here and test it out, we're not choking it from the factory terribly much. It's still not perfect. You see it's at 0.99 on the headers, but that's close enough where we're not leaving a lot of performance on the table. The next thing you'll notice is the pistons and conrods are both struggling to keep up with the RPM. So we can go ahead and make them better. Again, we don't know what's internal to the engine. We could just go and reference similar engines in real life. And it really would be kind of unusual for an engine like this to come with forged internals from the factory. So instead of upgrading the material type, we're just going to slap that quality slider all the way up and then all the pieces are working perfectly fine in the engine's normal operating range. So now we need to tune its performance to make it as close as possible to the one in the 200BX. Looking at the statistics, we see we need to make 140 foot-pounds of torque and 136 brake horsepower. So we're in the right range. We don't need to make that much power. So I'm gonna increase the compression a bit and then also increase the cam profile. This is a sports car, so it should have a sporty cam profile. And we are actually already over the horsepower requirement, but we're not quite there with the torque. So we might have to make some adjustments on that. If we increase the ignition timing, that might help. No, not really, it didn't change it much. The torque went up, but also so did the horsepower. Oh! I forgot, I had this all just running straight through nothing because I was showing you the cast log and short cast. Okay, so on here, let's give it a high flow three-way exhaust because it's a sports car. And this is again, things you can't see the internals of the catalytic converter and the muffler. So you just gotta do your best guess here. And I would just say it probably has baffled mufflers, nothing too fancy, but we do know it has two mufflers. So there we go, we're now at 134 horsepower and 136 foot-pounds of torque. So we're closer to the goal but we can still tweak things a little bit more to probably get some more power out of it. Like right here, it says it's running too rich. So how do we fix that? We just lower the fuel mixture a bit. And now we're sitting at 136 horsepower and 138 foot-pounds of torque. That's pretty much exactly what we wanted to be. We're literally 1.3 foot-pounds of torque too low. That's like nothing. That is very good precision. And just for fun, let's do some automatic testing. interesting you really see the exhaust was actually holding the engine back a little bit so if we increase the exhaust diameter look at that the power goes up a lot very very easily so maybe we could use that if we do the type LS edition we just make the exhaust a little bit bigger or something like that but we don't need to touch nothing here because these stats are perfect now for the hard part we must do the car visuals so we already have the coupe body style here but we got to choose what paint job. Well, if we're matching it exactly, we would need a grayish silver like this. 
but I don't like that color. So I'm just going to leave it the red color it is, but we'll reduce the flakiness a little bit because it looks way too shiny. But if you do it like that, that looks pretty good. And we can't hide from it anymore. I need to morph the body to match the 200BX as close as I can. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last time where I tweak it a little bit, export it to BeamNG Drive, and then tweak it again until it looks good. And that's a long, slow process. So I'll be back once I'm done. Well, I got some bad news here. The things I need to adjust, I could not adjust. The things I can adjust were already pretty much perfect. So this car is very, very differently shaped in the 200BX. So we're really going to have to rely on my awful designing skills to try to make it look like the real 200BX. We're going to start with the most obvious thing I see, which is the black strip that surrounds most of the vehicle. There's a little piece on the front that doesn't have it, and then over on the rear, I don't think it's behind the license plate, because if you look closely, you can see it stops right before it. And there we are. We have a pretty ugly looking black strip that goes around most of the vehicle. You'll notice that I did add the indicators to the vehicle as well, and then on the front, I consider this piece part of the black strips as well, where it kind of splits off into three different sections, so that is there. You will notice it does get a little bit weird, like this indicator just kind of vanishes in triangles even though it's a rectangle, and also there's just a gap here. I'm hoping most of that won't be noticeable when we actually export the car. And now we're going to do most of the rear face of the vehicle. So that's the tail lights, the reverse lights, this black bar with the words 200BX on it, the upper tail light, and the words Ibishu. And I realized I need a name for the vehicle. So this is officially the I Best You 201BX because it's one better than the Ibishu, so they bested them. So the way this is all done, we have a simple piece right here of trim that looks pretty much exactly like on the 200BX. We have the 201BX, we got the reverse lights, and then the tail lights. This is actually one big light but I put another chunk of plastic basically on top of it that emphasizes the line of the trunk so it looks like two separate lights like the 200BX. And also we have another tail light up here, and then of course the words, I best you. The main thing I noticed here is the overall height of the trunk just feels a lot taller than the actual 200BX for some reason. And now we're going to do the rear bumper, and to do the bumper we need to add a lot of bumps. So we add a bump for the license plate and then the license plate itself and then we just got to add a bunch of bumps down here trying to make it have this same curve and lastly we got to have the exhaust oh man things did not go well here the license plate and the exhaust that were great but the extra curves that's where things got a little bit hard mostly this one down below because it wants to curve like a smiley face no matter what you do so i do my best to pick a piece that makes it look straightish but still it looks like a smiley face and then also it actually loops around the side of the vehicle so i kind of did that but the way it intersects right here is just really ugly and i don't know what to do to fix that so this is definitely the worst we've done so far and the problem is, is you can't just like stretch this around the whole vehicle because look it just curves it like becomes a super crazy happy face like the joker or something we don't need that so that's why it has that weird overlapping section there so anyways the next step we're going to do is we're going to continue the curve along that i was mentioning so we already have it here but we got to get it going along the whole side of the vehicle and then even a little bit on the front as well so i'm going to do all of this all at once including the gap in the front bumper Oh my goodness. You know, usually when I make a video, I say this is an informative video. This ain't informative at all because this is a disaster. This is actually a comedy video because everything is going so terribly here. So I tried to get the front looking like that and it does, but it also looks like it was in a mild front impact that just mangled everything. So to try to make everything match, I did a similar style to the rear, which maybe it looks a little bit better because the transition is smooth here but again it literally looks like it's just been in a car crash because it's so bumpy and i don't know how to make it less bumpy the side though the side's banging except for the fact that there's just this little lip at the edges that i can't cover up i love the sides ah oh, don't look at the front oh don't look at the rear just look at the side and there are just a few more things that we need to do on the side before it's done so we need to give it some mirrors a door handle and we need to change the trim around the windows to be a black rubber all right, that went pretty well, but really now, how could you possibly mess that up? I don't know. As you see, I also changed out the wheels so the wheels look a little bit more like the ones on the 200BX. So all we got left is basically this top section of the front bumper. So we need to do the lights, these extra holes, the logo, and then we should be good. <laughs> Why did that look like that? I don't know. Those are supposed to be squares. That is clearly not a square. Oh, this is a disaster. Oh my goodness, those headlights look so bad! This whole thing looks so bad! But you know what? I've called it! We are done! That is what the 201BX is gonna look like! Now we need to just do the final touches on this thing. 
So what you're seeing now is all the defaults I gave it so we could test out the body, which I didn't actually need to do. So rear wheel drive, correct. Gearbox is gonna be a manual five speed and it tops out at about 145 miles per hour, I think. So that should be good. Spacing should be fine. And differential, surprisingly, the base version actually has an open differential. It's not a LSD. So we're just gonna leave that as it is. On the 200BX, we have 195-60R15s in both the front and the back, so of course it has to be a radial to be that size. For the compound, it says normal. So I'm going to assume normal means medium. As I said, the tire width should be 195, so we'll make it 195 in both the front and the rear. And then the rims are only 15 inches, so we'll make it a little bit smaller. And then down here, you see it's 195-70R15. We need that to be a 60, so we're going to reduce the tire diameter until it says 60 or 65, because that's as low as we can go. All right, that'll work. And the rim material is, in fact, steel, so that is good. For the brakes, it has solid disc brakes front and rear, and they don't look like anything special. So I'm just going to assume there'd be like a two-piston configuration, but it does say premium brake pads. So I'm going to just increase the size a little bit on both the front and the rear to simulate the premium brake pad size. Pad type, I'm not going to touch because it already is kind of in the sport zone, if you ask me. For the under tray, if we look at the underside of the vehicle, I don't see anything fancy going on there. So we're just going to leave the under tray at the default settings. And then for the interior, we have a 2 plus 2 setup. And looking around, I don't see anything super fancy about this. So I would just assume this would be considered a standard or maybe even a sport interior. And then over here on the media playback, we do have a cassette tape option. But we also have a CD player option. So in automation, we got to reduce the rear number of seats. We'll give it the sport interior. And here, again, we don't have the option for a CD player, even though it clearly has one. So I'm going to give it the premium cassette, which I would assume would be simulating the fact that it has a CD player, which might not be normal in the 1990s. Although it seems like it's normal in the BMG drive vehicles, that's for sure. There is no traction control option, so it's not going to have traction control. And ABS is optional, but on the base system, it does not get ABS. So that means traction control is going to stay at none. And then for safety, since this car came out in the 90s, but it was at the very early 90s, I'm going to assume advanced 80s is the closest match for that. And then for the springs, if we look at the springs, they appear to be linear. So I'm going to keep them as standard. And I'm assuming the dampers are also going to be very basic. So we're going to keep them as twin tube dampers. And then for the sway bars, we have no option there. But we are going to give it the sport preset since this is a sports car. And then... We are done with the 201BX. Let's go ahead and export this disaster and see how it does. I pulled out the perfect comparison angle because from this angle, the cars look very, very similar. It works perfectly from this angle, but you need this angle because if you actually have the cars side by side, you're going to realize there's one big, big problem with the 201BX and that is it's big. In every dimension, the 201BX is just bigger than the 200BX. It's a big car for some reason. And that's, again, one of the things I can't quite change in automation. But the visual details are there and they are similar. For example, looking at the back, and we bring the 200BX a little bit closer to the camera so you can't tell it's so much bigger, but it has the same sort of details, especially that black bar on the rear and the shape of the taillights. Those are really good. The outline of the taillights, not so much. But it's got a lot of the same design style on the rear. And also on the side, again, that's the strong point. Looking good from the side. And I always back up the 200BX almost all the way so you can't see the abomination corner where everything's just overlapping and ugly. But if you back it up just like that, it looks pretty good like that, huh? And over on the front, well, <laughs> those headlights. Every time I see those headlights, oh man, I don't know what's going on with them. They are so droopy and misshapen. It is a disaster. I know, you're just thinking, well, YBR, why didn't you make it straight right here? I tried. They don't do that. They don't want to. But the overall design is similar here. One big problem is the front bumper on the 201BX is tall. Like, this thing has a ton of height here. So everything on the 201BX is spaced out more than the 200BX just to fill the room. But now, we must do the most important question which one is faster so to give myself a little bit of an advantage i'm gonna make the ai drive the 200 bx while i drive the 201 bx and since i gave it a manual that means the ai gets a manual which is an advantage for them unfortunately 
Also, now's a good time to mention I did actually modify one more thing. I modified the gearing to be a lot closer. I think I put it to like 70 because I realized, wait a minute, this is a sports car. It should have sports car gearing. So now it's geared a lot closer to what the 200 BX is. And look at that, 201 BX showing what it got. It's gonna be an easy win, ain't it? Oh no, where is the finish line? Finish line, come closer, faster, faster. Oh my goodness. Would you look at that? It's a tie. My car is perfectly exactly like the 200BX, except in reality it's not. I had a much better launch than the AI did there. The 200BX is no doubt faster than the 201BX. And I think it just comes down to the fact that it's bigger, it's going to be heavier. My car almost weighs 3,000 pounds. The 200BX only weighs like 2,600 pounds. I have a couple hundred pounds on them. So that is a big disadvantage for me, but you know what that helps with the crash testing if I could catch up to you I'm gonna bump you. Yeah, take that. Uh-huh. You got bumped and it didn't do much So I'm gonna keep bumping you but what we really need to do is a head-on crash test That's the real test. So we don't need that other AR car there So we're just gonna say get rid of him and we'll get a new 200 BX for the crash That one's close, but that's the NX and again, to make everything as fair as possible, it's going to be a base version. Hey, you're not even on the road, man. Get on the road, and I'm going to put you way down here. And this is the exact same way we crashed the Gavel Grand Jury. The exact same location. Everything is the same, because this is the perfect spot to do the test. First thing I got to do, though, is line up the cars and then make sure I don't have any damage on me from me bumping stuff, trying to teleport them around, so we are good to go. And then the AI, come on at me, man. See what happens with your weak and lightweight car. I got mass on my side. You might be faster, but I am stronger. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Eight times slow-mo. Watch this. 16 times slow-mo. Oh, get wrecked. Look at his roof. His roof is messed up. Me, it's like I got some damage on my front. Maybe a little bit in the A pillar. That's all. I'm good. You, on the other hand, you is wrecked. That's the power of the 201BX. I told you it was better, unless you're measuring straight line speed, in which case it's actually worse. How is the handling, though? This is a sports car, after all, so the handling is important. Let's see here. Going through a swerve like this. Oh, that's, that, that's not pretty at all. That is not pretty at all. It does not turn in nearly tight enough. And also, we have an open differential on this thing. So if we try to, like, slide it, it's not really going to be a pleasant experience because of that. Oh, no. See, the problem is that the 201BX is like it's in a completely different class. That's the problem. It's bigger and it's more of a Grand Tour vehicle, where the 200BX is more of a lightweight sports car. And really, there's nothing I could do to this car to make it smaller. I could make it lighter weight by kind of cheating it and making it out of carbon fiber, but that's just unrealistic. It would make no sense. All right, just for fun, let's try to slide this a little bit. Come on, hold the drift on now. Yep, that's what happens when you try to drift with an open differential. They don't like drifting. Normally, that'd be no problem. So how about we do one more crash, and this time it's just bullying, because I have a brand new Fresh This Can Be 201BX. There's a 201. I don't know what to call it, but the point is I got a new one, 200BX. They got an old one, and I'm just going to smash it in them and show them I'm the real deal. I am strong. You is weak. It is really strong. The automation export cars are strong, but woo, sometimes the crashes do look a little bit funky. But that's probably on me for overlapping parts weirdly. So then it's just like, I don't know what to do. Here's just, yeah, don't look at that. Good news is, is it drives still. So that means you can trash into a solid object like so. It's kind of funny. A tire wall is a solid object. I know it doesn't make sense because in real life those are used because they're not solid. Well, in here it's a solid object and we can't really drive much. You know what there needs to be? There needs to be a map that puts actual tire walls all over the place so you can smash into them instead of having to place them yourself. Maybe I'll do that someday. I don't know. But anyways, it's time to finish this video up with everybody's favorite activity. Throwing vehicles off a leap of death. And we got so many choices on which version to use of the 201BX. I'm going to use this one, whichever the default one was called. It's called like, not YBR, 201BX. I best you. I don't know what it's called. I don't care because the name in the game isn't what's important. The important thing is, is it a good duplicate of a 200BX? Honestly, not really. This one went a lot worse. The gavel grand jury was a lot better than this one. I will admit that now. 
All right, we're going to do a really big smash there. Oh, goodness, what has happened? I think that's the engine or the transmission that's just kind of exploded because I see the engine and it looks okay, but I don't know what else would be white in the vehicle. And it's like near the front, isn't it? Very, very uh, unusual. This is why we don't really crash test the automation cars too much because they're not going to be nearly as good as an actual handmade vehicle. So that's why when you make an automation car, the focus is the actual creation process and not so much the crashing. Performance though, performance you can definitely test because you can have whatever performance you want out of an automation car. That's the nice thing. It's just the crashing is that. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how much bigger and slower the 201BX is compared to the 200. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. Haha! -ha! I made the lights a little bit better, like they're still droopy, but they're not as droopy as before.